Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Jinya. Uh, today's speaker, I, I guess, uh, uh, Professor Shiki will um, speak a, a little bit, right? Yes. Now, I yes. think the, uh, I pass the best to Professor Shiki. Yes. The course will be Dr. Shiki first. And then after. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, can I start it now? Wait, uh, Mbak Aurel will. Uh... Uh, okay, okay. Okay. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon. Jung Wu Hao. Welcome to the guest lecture series about improvement of heat dissipating performance of powder coating with graphene nanoparticles. My name is Aurelia Salsabila and I am your host, the gentleman. This meeting will provide you plenty of opportunities to discuss, share knowledge and insights. Before we proceed the guest lecture today, we would like to express our sincere gratitude to Excellency, the head of Department Material and Metallurgical, Swell November Institute of Technology, Mr. Sigi Triwijaksono, SSE, MSC, PH, Professor Min Cheng Yang, Excellency Moderator, Mrs. Amalia Roshida, ST, MSC, and our beloved attendants. Before we come to the main station, let us start this by praying first, so the event that we will hold on this day will run well without any obstacle at all. Pray best on individual belief begins. <coughs> now we invite the head of Department Material and Metallurgical School November Institute of Technology, Mr. Sigi Triwijaksono, SSE, MSE, PhD, to give a first speech. To Mr. Sigi, time and place are yours. First. Okay, thank you very much, uh, moderators. Uh, sorry, MC, um, Mbak Aurel. Um, very good afternoon, everybody, especially Professor Yang. It is very nice to meet you again. Um, it is my privilege to welcoming you on this uh, special guest lecture and, and also very special uh, topic as well. Um, uh, let me introduce a uh, little bit our department. Uh, I am here is the chairman of the Department of Materials and Metallurgical Engineering from 2020, this year until uh, next five year, until 2025. Um, I think it is very, uh, very interesting time to have you, Professor Yang, uh, with your lecture. Uh, I did the topic about the uh, coating and uh, I think it is a special topic. Yeah, uh, our department right now, has about um, seven associate professor and still only has one professor. So we need to boost the lectures to become a professor in the near future. Yeah. Um, of course, uh, Miss Amalia, yeah, also need to be boosted for this purpose. Um, we have also. Uh, six laboratories yeah that support our lecture our uh, educations and research uh, so we hope uh, maybe next time because it is still very uh, tough this this lecture by online but thank you very much for your time professor young uh, we hope we hope ne next time we have a uh, very beneficial collaborations yeah uh, that 
here we have Bu Amalia as your student in the in the past as in the master, master students. Maybe next time she <laughs> will back again, <laughs> yeah, to NDST. Okay, I think uh, not more time for me to speech. So I will be I will give to the uh, master of ceremony to continue the this uh, guest lecture. So thank you very much for all and especially for uh, Professor Yang. Have your time. Assalamualaikum and afternoon. Thank you so much to Mr. Sigi Triwijaksono, SSE, MSE, PhD. Now, without further ado, we invite Mrs. Amalia Roshida, STMSC, as moderator. Time and place are yours. Yeah, okay. Thank you, Mbak Aurel, for the nice opening. And also, thank you to Dr. Sigit for the opening speech. Hello and Assalamualaikum. Good afternoon to all my dear students. I hope all of you in a health, safe, and happy. As mentioned by the host, at this time, we will have a lecture talk by Professor Yang with the title, Improvement of Heat Dissipating Performance of Border Coating with Graphene Nanoparticles. So let us all say welcome to our valuable speaker, Professor Ming Ching Yang from the National Taiwan University of Science and Technology. Welcome, Prof, and I do really appreciate it. Thank you for your time in this guest lecture series. And then before the talk, let me read a short biography of Professor Ming Ching Yang. So his full name is uh, Ming Ching Yan, and he has earned his PhD from Department of Chemical Engineering and Material Science at the University of Minnesota in USA in 1988. And he is a lecturer at the Department of Material Science and Engineering, National Taiwan University of Science and Technology since 1990. And regarding the journal publication, he has authored and co-author over 160 journal papers with the age index 49 with the citation more than 7,000. And his research interests is uh, include biopolymers, biodegradable polymers, scaffold for tissue engineering, and also silicon-based ophthalmic products. And as I said by Dr. Siget, in addition, uh, he is my supervisor in master study. And I learned a lot from him related to nanocomposite polymer for biomedical application. And now he will give us a talk related to graphene nanoparticles. So to my all dear student, I do really hope for you to pay attention in this talk so that we can get more knowledge and then at the end of this talk, at the end of this talk, Professor Yang will give us three up to five simple questions. And then for students who can answer correctly, we will send a gift for you. So, well, and let us start the lecture talk. Professor Min Ching Yang, the time is yours. Thank you. Okay. Uh... Okay. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Ming Qing Yang. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about improvement of the heat dissipation performance of a powder coating with a graphene nanoparticle. Okay, now uh, let's first take a look about the coating method we use. Here in this uh, talk, in this talk, uh, we uh, thermal set uh, powder coating. And actually, there are uh, several types of uh, thermal set powder coating as um, epoxy resin, uh, polyester, and uh, acrylic acid resin. Uh, 
to compare with the uh, conventional solvent coating, uh, powder coating provides uh, better thermal conductivity and better binding uh, between the coating and the substrate. And also, uh, they are more stable, uh, cross linking, and hence uh, denser and uh, tighter coating. And now, this slide shows uh, uh, the uh, procedure to perform this uh, thermal state uh, powder coating. It is basic, uh, based on this uh, electrostatic powder coating process. Uh, first, uh, dry powders are charged uh, by an uh, electrostatic uh, spray gun and then spray and adhere to the uh, grounded uh, subject uh, surface uh, without using any solvent. So this will be more uh, eco-friendly. Grounded the subject with a deep coating uh, powder is put into a uh, oven uh, and cure for a certain uh, period of time under high temperature to allow film forming. <clears throat> And now let's turn to the, to the other uh, topic of this talk is uh, graphene. Uh, graphene is a uh, two-dimensional honeycomb that is of the sp 2 uh, bonded uh, carbon atoms. Here this uh, uh, TEM uh, image shows that the structure of this uh, uh, graphene uh, uh, honeycomb uh, lattice and the distance uh, between the carbon is around uh, 0.14 nanometer. Now let's uh, take a look uh, about the graphene's uh, uh, history. Uh, actually, uh, efforts to make thin films of graphite by mechanical exploration started in uh, 1990. In 2002, uh, Robert uh, Rutherford and uh, Richard uh, Dubman uh, fire for a, a pattern in the US uh, on a muscle to produce the graphene uh, by repeatedly uh, peeling off layers uh, from a graphite plate uh, adhere to a subject, achieving a graphite thickness of uh, 250 nanometers. Uh, in the same year, uh, Bu Jian and uh, uh, Wen Huang uh, fire pattern for a method to produce uh, graphene based on exfoliation followed by attrition. Uh, the real progress up happened in uh, 2004. Uh, graphene was first uh, properly uh, isolated and uh, characterized uh, by Andre Skyam and uh, Konstantin uh, Novoselov at the University of uh, Manchester. And for this discovery, uh, they won the Nobel Prize in uh, Physics in 2010. Uh, now about the uh, graphene's uh, properties, uh, the graphene is the thinnest uh, imageable material, and of course is the first uh, truly uh, two-dimensional material with a thickness of uh, around uh, 0.345 uh, nanometer per layer, uh, which is a, a single layer of uh, carbon. And it is the uh, strongest uh, material ever measured uh, with a tensile strength uh, in uh, around uh, 130 gigapascal. And it is also stiff, uh, known material with uh, 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 the uh, Young's modules uh, uh, around uh, one terapasca, uh, greater than uh, diamond. And also, uh, most uh, are stretchable uh, crystal, uh, up to 20% uh, elastically. And with uh, uh, another uh, property is uh, uh, graphene has a record uh, thermal conductivity uh, greater than diamond with uh, thermal conductivity around one watt per meter per Kelvin. And with uh, oh, another property is the uh, uh, highest uh, current density temperature, uh, with, uh, which is a uh, uh, million times of those in uh, copper. 
uh, conducted electricity in the limit of the no electrons. Uh, with uh, another problem is uh, it has the largest uh, surface area and allows uh, to abdomen at the room temperature. And also uh, graphene has a high infrared emissivity greater than uh, uh, 0.95. Uh, this is important in this study. Okay, uh, in GAMS uh, 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 first method, they use a scotch. So this method is also called scotch tape method. Uh, basically, uh, you just pick a piece of uh, scotch tape and then place on the surface of uh, 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 graphite and peel off and then put it to the surface of a substance such as a silicon wafer for a few seconds and then peel out again. Now, uh, a few layers of uh, uh, graphite, uh, graphene will uh, stick on the surface of uh, silicon. So in this picture, we can see uh, there are several layers. Uh, this is uh, a bilayer, uh, which this is also thicker and thicker and we can see that uh, the color uh, will be more uh, darker and darker and even greater than uh, if the layer is uh, greater than 10, 10 layers then the color will change into somewhat uh, a little bit uh, blue and uh, uh, since the discovery of uh, 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 graphene in 2004 since then, there are the many uh, methods to produce uh, graphene. Here, uh, I will present uh, several, and they can categorize into two, uh, uh, two, two categories. Uh, the first type is uh, called a button up process, including uh, chemical vapor deposition, epitaxial uh, growth, and uh, solo thermal. And the other type is a uh, top down uh, process. Uh, including uh, micro mechanical cleavage, uh, chemical synthesis uh, through oxidation of graphite, uh, thermal uh, exo exfoliation and reduction, and uh, electrolytic uh, exo exfoliation. Now, about the first type, uh, button up process here, uh, CBD, uh, also uh, such as the uh, arc charge, epitaxial growth on silicon carbide, uh, chemical conversion and reduction of uh, uh, carbon monoxide uh, on zipping uh, carbon uh, mono, uh, uh, nanotube and the uh, self-assembly of uh, surfactant all uh, uh, belong to button-up process. Uh, among these, uh, CBD and uh, epitaxial growth often produce a tiny amount of uh, large Detectory uh, uh, graphing kit. And from this uh, method, uh, graphing is not suitable uh, for polynanocomposite because uh, fabrication of uh, nanocomposite requires a large amount of uh, graphing kit, uh, preferable with uh, modified uh, surface structure. Now, first, uh, about the detail of, uh, of uh, chemical vapor deposition. Uh, basically, the reaction is taking place in a chamber, uh, usually a 12 inch chamber of uh, a uh, 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 quartz reactor. The heater, uh, it is a heater. Uh, graphite, uh, it is graphite uh, electrodes are placed at the top and the button with a, a distance of uh, 10 uh, centimeters. And there's a, a IR uh, detector for measuring uh, temperature. And the subset is a uh, copper uh, foil uh, at, at the bottom of the heater. And also uh, it is uh, annealed after, uh, after heating and is annealed uh, by uh, hydrogen and the argon. Uh, to increase the uh, copper grain. 
and the, this uh, figure shows the uh, the uh, uh, temperature profile of this uh, uh, process. And and the gas uh, using uh, uh, methane and uh, hydrogen as a precursor, and they were deposited on the surface of this uh, uh, copper foil. And after a certain time, uh, uh, are injected uh, to cool uh, the system, and so that uh, on top of this copper foil, uh, uh, graphene, a, a, a few layers of graphene will uh, grow uh, on this uh, surface. The other type is of uh, button up uh, process is uh, epitaxial uh, growth on silicon carbide. The substrate used is uh, dyed uh, uh, commercial uh, silicon carbide waivers. Uh, and the step, uh, the first is using hydrogen etching uh, to produce the atom atomically uh, fresh surface. And thus, in the second step, uh, vacuum gravitation uh, 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 to produce an uh, ultra thin epitaxial graphite layer. And then uh, uh, it will uh, 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 apply uh, uh, metal uh, contacts such as a palladium and or uh, uh, gold. And then using, uh, using electron pin to pattern and the, uh, the, uh, the layer, the, the graphite layer. And lastly, uh, uh, follow that uh, oxygen plasma exit uh, to define the graphite uh, structure. And finally, uh, while binding, the advantage of this method is uh, we can produce a patterned uh, graphene structure. The drawback is we need a high vacuum, ultra high vacuum, and the cost is high. And the other, uh, the modification of previous method is uh, uh, silicon carbide decomposition. And this figure shows the, uh, the method. Uh, when silicon carbide substrates uh, are near at a high temperature, uh, silicon atoms uh, selectively dissolve uh, from the surface and the uh, carbon atoms are left behind. So this figure shows that uh, after silicon uh, atoms uh, uh, escape from the surface, uh, leaving behind uh, carbon and, and forming a thin layer of the graphene. And, and then uh, it will form a few layer uh, graphene, so-called uh, FLT. And the, the graphene will start to grow up uh, with the leaf, uh, with, with uh, uh, escaping or uh, 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 sublimation of the silicon. And eventually we'll obtain uh, a thick uh, a few layers of uh, uh, graphene. And the other method is uh, solvo uh, thermal. Uh, in this method, we use a uh, teflon lined uh, container such as this one. And, and the material we use uh, uh, sodium and uh, ethanol uh, with a mono ratio of uh, one to one. And the process. Uh, it's, uh, it follows a uh, uh, reaction at uh, 230 degrees C for 20, uh, 72 hours to form a graphene uh, precursor in the in the chamber, and followed by a uh, rapid uh, uh, pyrolysis uh, and uh, washed using the ionized water, and use uh, and uh, uh, resulting uh, 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 graphene was a vacuum filter. Uh, and then uh, it was, uh, this uh, solid is dried in a vacuum oven at 100 degrees C for 24 hours. The advantage and drawback is that uh, uh, this method is simple and possible uh, uh, to produce uh, a mass quantity of uh, graphene. Now, the other type is uh, top down process. In this uh, process, uh, a graphite or is the derivative uh, obtained uh, from the top down uh, method offers a uh, significant uh, economic advantage over the bottom up uh, method. 
basically uh, they are uh, uh, based on this uh, uh, the positioning of uh, expanded graphite. And this uh, expanded graphite was obtained by alkali metal or uh, <coughs> acid in, in the catalyst uh, graphite uh, can be expanded upon uh, heat treatment uh, to produce a thicker uh, form of a two dimensional carbon known as uh, expanded graphite. Uh, which is uh, commonly used uh, as a fuel uh, for uh, polymer composite. And the first method is uh, micro uh, mechan mechanical cleavage. It is uh, based, uh, the material is uh, highly out of uh, pyrolytic graphite. And first, uh, we use uh, an adhesive tape such as duct tape placed onto uh, this uh, HOPG. The tape is peeled off uh, when some layer uh, stick to the surface. And this tape is placed onto the surface of the target uh, subject, for example, silicon wafer. And the tape is peeled off uh, when the layer uh, stick to the uh, target uh, surface. The advantage of this method is uh, uh, production of single layer graphene is uh, feasible and the back uh, the number uh, the quantity of the graphene is a little bit the next uh, method is uh, chemical synthesis uh, through uh, oxidation of graphite the first uh, in this category uh, in this method they, they are uh, the first one is uh, the most uh, common method is uh, method. Uh, in this method, uh, graphene is uh, produced by oxidizing graphite to uh, graphite or oxide uh, by using uh, suitable oxidizer such as uh, potassium manganese. And the graphite oxide uh, produced is uh, again uh, chemically reduced to get uh, graphene. And here, this figure shows that. Uh, we have a, in the beginning we have the graphite and after treating with uh, these chemicals uh, oxidizing uh, make it oxidize, uh, oxidize in these chemicals uh, for 96 hours and and then uh, the, the, the graphite uh, graphene, uh, graphene layer will uh, have this uh, oxygen produced and this will expand the space uh, between the layers. <coughs> and then after uh, reduction, uh, we'll append uh, pure graphene. And after that, uh, in order to uh, disintegrate this uh, graphite, ultrasonication is used uh, to stabilize uh, the uh, graphite oxide solution and uh, enhancing the exfoliation in the uh, graphite oxygen, uh, oxide. The modification of Hammer's uh, method uh, make it uh, uh, is uh, uh, in three major steps. The first is oxidation and natural graphite break is uh, mixed uh, with uh, a strong acid such as uh, sulfuric acid and the nitric acid uh, followed by continuous uh, studying in ice bath. Then uh, potassium manganese is uh, added and uh, stirred at room temperature. Then the solution is kept overnight after uh, adding the ionized water and uh, hydrogen peroxide. Follow that is uh, acidification uh, used uh, for dilution until the pH is uh, around seven. And lastly, uh, also sonication is uh, carried out to get uh, monolayer uh, graphite oxide. And after obtaining a graphite oxide, uh, the next step is uh, reduction. And this uh, chemical reaction uh, shows that uh, uh, the method to uh, reduce uh, graphite oxide uh, back to graphene. Here, uh, in this uh, step, uh, addition of certain reducing agents such as uh, hydrazine, such as this one, or uh, sodium uh, borate, 
uh, is uh, made to the uh, um, uh, uh, measured solution. Uh, the attached uh, uh, functional group are uh, removed and to enhance the uh, exploration, certain polar uh, aplastic solvents can be used along with the uh, organic compounds. Although thermal reduction gives uh, a better uh, quality graphene, but at its own uh, advantage. <laughs> this is a chemical uh, reduction. That, 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 uh, that the next method is uh, called uh, uh, thermal reduction, but uh, we'll uh, talk about it uh, later. And the third step is uh, post treatment. Uh, the solution is built and wash with the island's water until uh, neutrality. The product is dried and uh, 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 grinded. Uh, the graphene so produced uh, can then be uh, sent uh, uh, for a uh, catalyzing uh, test. The advantage of uh, this method uh, is uh, it, it is a high yield process and also scalable uh, to industrial level. And the limitation of this method, uh, the defect on graphene uh, sheets are uh, inevitable, and the process is time consuming and can be laborious. And the stickless control is not a promising as uh, uh, the exotactyl uh, graphene growth on, or, or, or the CBD process. And after uh, uh, talking about uh, chemical reduction, now we take a look at uh, the thermal exfoliation and uh, reduction. In this method, uh, thermally uh, reduced uh, graphene uh, oxide uh, can be uh, produced uh, by this uh, process. Here again, in, in the beginning, we also have uh, uh, the graphite. After treating with uh, oxidizer, uh, it will become uh, graphite oxide. So this is basically the same as the previous uh, method. But after that, we use the heat to reduce uh, the graphene. Here, uh, it is conducted in uh, 1050 degree in a uh, air, uh, in the argon environment for only 30 seconds. And then we will obtain this uh, uh, graphene layer. And other, uh, afterwards, it will be uh, disintegrated into monolayer. The advantage of this method is uh, first, it is a uh, one step uh, exploration reduction. And the heating time is short, only 30 seconds. And this is also dry basis because there's no solvent involved. The disadvantage is uh, we require, we need a high heating uh, temperature. And the the other one is uh, a smaller uh, sheet size compared to chemical reduced uh, sheet. And uh, if this is a new one, uh, electrochemical exploration. The electrochemical uh, elect exploration method is an uh, eco-friendly method for producing high quality uh, graphene. Here in this figure shows that this is uh, uh, the basic uh, method. Uh, here we have a graphite after treating uh, after uh, in a uh, in a electrochemical process and oxygen is produced uh, due to the dis uh, dissociation of water and oxygen is produced between the layers and which will expand uh, this uh, uh, graphite uh, graph graphite layer into uh, 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 Single uh, mono layers, and this is a, a, a traditional method of electro uh, 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 electrochemical method. Uh, and here we have uh, a uh, uh, counter ion uh, counter electrode uh, connect to the uh, graphite rod. It's a uh, uh, positive uh, uh, electrode, and after a while, uh, after uh, given uh, 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 voltage of ten voltage of uh, uh, current, uh, the uh, 
uh, graphite uh, rows will disintegrate into flakes. And these are uh, supposed uh, graphene. And now the modify in order to uh, this this makes the graphite uh, graphene difficult to collect. And here we have a, a new method uh, uh, modification by using uh, 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 com compressed uh, graphite in a uh, porous uh, membrane hold together in a porous membrane as an electrode. And uh, with the progress of the electrochemical reaction, uh, the uh, 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 graphite is uh, uh, disintegrated and expanded, and this uh, this will form the uh, a P, uh, whole in, uh, whole body of uh, graphene, so that we can uh, we can uh, uh, correct this one. Uh, this is much easier to handle to correct. <coughs> The advantage of this uh, electrochemical exploration is, is a high yield, and scalable to industrial level, easy to operate, and uh, relatively a faster approach. And it's, it is also uh, eco friendly. And uh, the, uh, uh, the graphene uh, can be easily obtained because it is uh, contained in a uh, expandable uh, vessel. And the graphene obtained can be uh, functionalized uh, depending upon the electrolyte, and hence can be more uh, compatible with a certain organic compound or a polymer. The limitation of this process is that uh, the impurity may be present in the form of uh, unwashed soap in between the uh, graphene layer because uh, during the uh, electrolytic uh, reaction, uh, there are uh, uh, electrolytes. Uh, in the in the solution, uh, so that it may uh, 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 contaminate uh, the uh, graphene. Uh, this may affect the conductivity of the graphene, and the thickness control is not as uh, promising as in a pistachio growth, uh, uh, graphene growth, uh, uh, or the uh, CVD uh, process. Uh, uh, research uh, we are focusing on the uh, gene, uh, so that it is uh, involved uh, uh, heat transfer. The so-called heat dissipation is that uh, energy generated from sources such as uh, uh, integrated circuit LED uh, will pass uh, to the environment such as air, uh, or coolant, or vacuum. And through a uh, heat transfer, and there are three modes of a uh, heat transfer uh, process. The first one is the conduction, which occurs in a stationary phase, uh, phase uh, such as solid or liquid. Uh, the other one is the convection, uh, which occurs in a flowing fluid such as air or liquid, and. The next, uh, the third one is the Asian, uh, occurs uh, between service at a different uh, temperature uh, with or without uh, medium. In our experiment, uh, the dissipation heat flux uh, from a coated aluminum uh, plate is uh, illustrated in this video, uh, the heating source uh, and on top of that is uh, aluminum plate and on the surface of aluminum plate is a, a layer of a coating and the heating source is uh, insulated with an insulator. Uh, we use a cork as an insulator and the heat transfer occurs. Uh, okay. so, what? No, no, no. Just move it. Okay. 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 Still I'm sorry, there is something problem with the. 
Yeah, it's okay. Just take your time. Uh, I see. Okay. Problem solved. Okay, uh, sorry for the interruption. Uh, these are the equations. Uh, I think uh, these are very familiar with the uh, students because uh, it is taken from the uh, textbook. And basically, uh, the conduction, uh, uh, heat flux of conduction is uh, equal to the uh, conduction, uh, to the convection heat, heat flux and also the radiation heat flux. And their equation is given uh, below. Uh, here, uh, in the case of conduction heat flux, it is uh, uh, the conductivity uh, times the uh, temperature difference from the button to the surface. And because it is a composite, uh, it, is, uh, it contains uh, both the uh, aluminum uh, plate and also uh, the coating. Uh, uh, the conductivity is uh, calculated from this uh, equation. And for convection, the heat flux is equal to the uh, heat transfer coefficient times the surface, uh, the temperature, surface temperature minus the, uh, the air temperature at the infinite distance. And for radiation, it's uh, uh, emissivity times uh, uh, the constant and also uh, the surface temperature, temp, uh, surface temperature to the fourth power at the, uh, temp, the infinite uh, or air temperature to the fourth power. And the per experimental uh, procedure is given here. First, we catalyze uh, the graphene we use and then uh, prepare a uh, uh, powder coating and after that, I uh, measure uh, the thermal property. This uh, uh, three days, and also uh, the force uh, convection heat transfer and the natural convective uh, heat transfer. And lastly, uh, we use a uh, uh, statistical method to analyze the results. And this figure shows that uh, the characteristics uh, characterization of a graphene in our experiment. And here is the, uh, the uh, characteristics of the graphene nanoparticles. And this figure is uh, the result from uh, SGM analysis of this uh, uh, graphene uh, flakes. And we also use the Laman uh, to analyze uh, the structure of uh, uh, graphene and we can observe the characteristic peaks of graphene in this uh, spectrum. And also use the uh, uh, AFM analysis, uh, uh, the thickness of these uh, tracks. So uh, we measure uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, the thickness, the uh, height of the, these uh, uh, flakes here and we can see that a uh, plateau uh, observed between these two green dots. And this is uh, just that uh, the, uh, the thickness uh, is uh, 3.896 nanometer, which is equivalent to a graphene layer of 6 to 10. And the next is uh, prevention of the powder coating. Uh, in the, the in the gra in gradient of the powder coating is uh, epoxy resin and uh, polyester resin and curing agent for uh, commercial products and also some auxiliary agent. And also uh, titanium oxide and also the uh, feeder we produce, we provide only 3% of uh, uh, feeder, either uh, graphene or photonitride for comparison. All ingredients were blended with a, a single screw extruder at 85 to 90 degrees C using a single screw extruder and the screw speed 
as uh, uh, 60 RPM. And the resultant uh, blend was uh, pressed into sheet uh, using roller smeater and uh, ground into uh, powder uh, to a diameter of uh, 0.1 to uh, 2 micrometers. And this is a, a, a mini machine. Now we want to measure the conductivity of this uh, material. Uh, the thermal conductivity was um, determined using a thermal conductivity meter, um, uh, meter uh, as shown here. And the thermal emissivity was uh, measured in an uh, infrared uh, emissivity detector in the of uh, 2 to 22 uh, micrometer, which is uh, in the range of uh, uh, infrared rate. Now, let's, uh, next is uh, the experiment. Uh, we have a two, uh, con uh, two heat transfer experiments. One is the uh, both the convective heat transfer. The, this is experiment <coughs> of the coated or uh, bare plate was performed according to the standard of uh, AMCA uh, tw uh, 2107. The heat supply was set uh, either uh, or 16 watts. And the plate was uh, placed uh, horizontally on the uh, flow rate of uh, two meter per second. Here we have a fan uh, providing the uh, air flow uh, uh, properly uh, uh, parallel to the surface of the test plate here. And the other one is uh, the nature uh, convective heat transfer uh, was uh, performed by uh, placing the uh, plate uh, horizontally as illustrated uh, below. And the top view of this uh, uh, setup is uh, uh, like this. Uh, we have a, a aluminum plate uh, below and this uh, plate is surrounded by a uh, cork, by insulator, cork insulator, and this is a side view of this experiment. The coefficients are affected by three factors. Uh, the type of combustion, uh, either uh, natural or both uh, convection. And the other factor is the uh, surface coating. Uh, they are uh, either uh, aluminum, uh, epoxy containing, uh, epoxy uh, coating containing boron nitride, or epoxy coating uh, containing graphene. And that also uh, total heat flux, uh, either uh, 8 watts or 16 watts. The weight of each vector on um, each uh, coefficient uh, can be evaluated uh, statistically with uh, analysis uh, uh, variance uh, using uh, SPS. The result uh, first is uh, about the thermal properties of this uh, 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 print. And we can see that uh, the overall uh, uh, conductivity is uh, uh, for aluminum is uh, 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 196.7 uh, uh, watts per meter per, kil uh, per kelvin. And for uh, a coated uh, freight, uh, it is dropped to um, uh, 79.5. Uh, and with the uh, printing of uh, boron nitride, and the conductivity increased to uh, 80, uh, 88.2 amount and uh, uh, six uh, was uh, attributed to the coating. And for graphene uh, loaded uh, coating, uh, the uh, total uh, 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 thermal conductivity is increased uh, to 165. Amount then, uh, amount is uh, uh, conductivity of uh, the, uh, the coating uh, provide a 33.3 uh, watts per meter per kelvin. And 
the other the, 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 this table shows the uh, emissivities of uh, aluminum plate and two types of uh, coating. And for aluminum tape, uh, type uh, plate, uh, the emissivity is only uh, 0.07. And for uh, bottom nitride loaded coating, it is uh, 0.04. And for graphene uh, loaded coating, it is uh, 0.88. And the result from a uh, forced uh, convective uh, heat transfer is given uh, in this table. And, and here we have two uh, uh, total uh, heat flux, either, either 800 or uh, 1600, uh, 1600. And this will uh, provide, uh, this will uh, give the uh, temperature difference uh, between the surface and the air. And among these uh, 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 total heat flux, uh, some of them are uh, from uh, uh, radiative uh, heat transfer and some of them from uh, convective heat transfer. And the ratio is that uh, for the radiative uh, heat transfer uh, takes uh, only 1.7% of the total uh, heat, heat flux. And when the coating, uh, when uh, uh, with a graphene loaded uh, coating, the percentage increase uh, to uh, 19 point, uh, around 16 percent. So the coating uh, did improve the uh, uh, did take a, 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 a non ignoble uh, uh, part of the heat transfer. And we can uh, uh, plot this uh, uh, convective heat flux against the uh, uh, temperature difference and obtain a very uh, good uh, 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 fitted, uh, linear regression result. And this shows that uh, the uh, correlation for the minimum flow is uh, uh, provide a, a heat transfer coefficient of uh, 20, 28 uh, watts per meter square uh, per uh, Kelvin. And in the textbook, we can find a very frequently used uh, correlation uh, given here. And we also plot the result uh, 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 to compare with uh, our experimental result and observe that uh, this, uh, uh, this um, uh, calculated result is only about 60% of the experimental result, possibly uh, because uh, there are some uh, uh, turbulent flow during a measurement, which will increase the heat transfer. Uh, now let's turn to the uh, natural uh, convective heat transfer. And here we have uh, this uh, uh, a result uh, and with the uh, uh, graphene uh, loaded coating, uh, the uh, radiative heat transfer ratio increased uh, from uh, 3.8 to 32.8 percent. So this indicated that uh, radiative, uh, the graphene uh, coating can increase and provide a radiative, radiative uh, uh, heat transfer. And this figure shows that uh, the, uh, we use a uh, uh, linear regression to obtain a, uh, uh, a fitted correlation uh, for natural convection. And from this uh, uh, co correlation, we can calculate the uh, 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 heat transfer coefficient as a, a function of uh, uh, temperature difference. So, now we uh, summarize all the experiments uh, in this table and the total heat transfer, uh, there are uh, heat transfer coefficients uh, and they are calculated according to this uh, uh, equation. And we can see the, uh, the result uh, using the bare aluminum uh, plate as the, uh, the base uh, for comparison 
uh, for false conviction with the uh, green uh, graphene uh, loaded uh, coating, uh, the uh, the ratio uh, the ratio of the uh, uh, heat transfer uh, total heat transfer versus uh, uh, alumina uh, heat transfer increased to one thirty two point one. That is uh, thirty over thirty percent of uh, uh, increase improvement in the heat transfer. And uh, that that the difference uh, between the eight hundred uh, 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 total uh, 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 heat transfer uh, heat flux is uh, a little one one thirty two now, uh, and the other one is uh, one thirty one. And for natural convection, uh, the uh, the ratio is uh, bigger, even bigger, uh, for uh 800 uh, uh watt per meter square and uh, uh, the ratio increased uh, from 100 to 166 and also for higher uh, heat flux it increased uh, from uh, 100 to 141 that this indicated that uh, uh, in the na in the case in the case of natural combustion uh, graphene uh, uh, lo loaded uh, coating can improve greatly the heat transfer. And I have mentioned that uh, we have uh, three factors affecting the, uh, the heat transfer coefficient. And the importance of the factors uh, affecting the heat transfer coefficient is then uh, analyzed using ANOVA. For uh, total uh, heat transfer coefficients, the type of convection was the uh, most influential uh, while uh, the, uh, the, the uh, total uh, heat flux was the least. Here we can see that uh, from the result of ANOVA, the F number, uh, F value is uh, the greatest uh, for convection type and uh, the the value is the least uh, for the uh, heat flux. And this figure shows the, uh, the total heat transfer coefficient uh, uh, always uh, uh, the, uh, coat, uh, the graphene coating uh, is, uh, uh, provide, uh, will provide the highest uh, uh, total uh, heat flux. Uh, uh, heat uh, transfer coefficient. And for convective heat transfer, the type of convection is uh, the major factor. Here, the convection shows that uh, the type of convection is the, the, uh, the major factor, and the surface type is the least. That is, uh, in this case, uh, in the uh, <clears throat> in in the case of a uh, 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 convective heat transfer, uh, the surface uh, is not uh, whether it is coated or not uh, is not a important uh, factor. And this figure shows that uh, uh, the coating uh, the difference between the uh, uh, coating is uh, uh, not as big as uh, in the case of uh, uh, total heat transfer. And for the radiative uh, heat transfer, uh, the major factor is the surface coating uh, here. And the minor factor is the total heat flux uh, given here. Yeah, th this is because uh, the surface, uh, uh, the coating uh, provide another uh, source of uh, uh, heat transfer and with the uh, uh, graphene loaded coating, uh, the uh, heat transfer coefficient is the uh, um, most significant improve. And this figure shows that uh, uh, the graphene uh, uh, loaded uh, coating uh, provides a high uh, radiative heat transfer coefficient. And it's uh, uh, much higher than uh, bare aluminum or uh, uh, boron nitride uh, uh, loaded coating. 
Okay, the conclusion of this uh, uh, research, uh, the heat transfer, uh, the, tra the transfer of heat from the source uh, to the sink involves uh, convection, uh, conduction, and uh, radiation. Under the force uh, convection, the radiative heat transfer coefficient uh, for the uh, graphene loaded uh, coating uh, was uh, only about 16%. Uh, uh, under the nature of convection, the, uh, the ratio of the graphene loaded coating was uh, about uh, 33%. And with the graphene loaded coating, the total heat, trans uh, heat dissipation rate was uh, increased by over uh, 30% of that of uh, uh, bare uh, aluminum surface. That, therefore, the, in our research, uh, we did discover that uh, graphene loading uh, did improve uh, the uh, heat dissipation uh, by over 30%. Okay, uh, this concludes this uh, 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 talk. And, uh, and then uh, I have four questions for for the, uh, for you to uh, to give a, uh, to, to answer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, thank you, Professor Lian. So thank you for the comprehensive lecture that you give to us. So dear all students, Professor Yang has uh, one, two, three, four. He has a four question to us. And then maybe I can read it one by one. And then for student who has know the answer, you may raise your hand and answer this question, okay? So the first question is, when was the graphene first isolated successfully? Quick, 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 who can answer? You can raise your hand. When was the graphene first isolated successfully? Hello, my dear student. Who can answer this question? Maybe you can uh, maybe you can say about the year only the year when when was the graphene first isolated successfully? Quick quick quick! Would like to raise your hand. No one want to ha want to raise your hand. Yeah, Ibri, Ziani, okay. Anisa. Okay, you can unmute yourself and then answer those questions. Ibri, Ziani, Anisa, are you there? Yes, two thousand and four. But I forget the yes. name. When was the Graven first isolated successfully in Friziani? 2004. 2004. Is that the correct answer, Pro? Yes. Yeah, great. Okay, thank you, Ibriziani Anisa. So you have answered correctly for the number one. And then for number two, what is the first method used to isolate graphene? Quick, 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 raise your hand. What is the first method used to isolate graphene? The first method. Hello, my dear student. Yeah, Rafi Priya Diantama. Okay, you can unmute your, yourself and try to answer the question, Rafi. Uh, mechanical exfoliation. Mechanical exfoliation. Okay, let us uh, ask Professor Yang, is that the correct answer? Yes. Yeah, okay, Rafi, thank you. Rafi Priya Diantama. Yeah, okay. Okay, and then the third question. Can graphene loaded coating improve the thermal conductivity of the coated AL plate? So this is a yes, no question, I think. 
So quick, 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 raise your hand. Can graphene loaded coating improve internal conductivity? Rizaldo Rizky Himawansa, yeah. Oke, okay, you can unmute yourself, Rizaldo. Yes, it it can. It can increase the thermal conductivity. Yeah. Uh, I think. Yeah. Oh, no, no, oh, no. No. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Okay, we can try to looking for another answer. Any other student want to give the answer for number three? Can graphene loaded coating improve the thermal conductivity of coated AL plate? If Rizaldo say yes, and then professor say sorry, so you have the answer actually. Hello, my dear student. Please raise your hand. Rahadian Prayoga, ya yeah, oke, okay. Rahadian Prayoga, oke, okay, you might try to answer this question. Um, maybe for the number three question, the answer will be no, because it's not uh, increasing the thermal conductivity, but it's improving the heat dissipation, maybe? <coughs> yeah, uh, the answer is uh, no, because the... Uh, uh, The conductivity of uh, the coating itself is lower than aluminum, so this will, this will prohibit uh, the heat transfer uh, a little bit. Is it is uh, about uh, uh, let me see, uh, 30, uh, lower uh, about 30 uh, uh, watt per meter per uh, Kelvin. It's a lower. Okay. Uh, because uh, uh, the coating itself is not very conductive, not as conductive as uh, aluminum. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. Thank you. And then we move to the last question. Uh, which heat transfer coefficient HTHCHF was effective was affected the most by the graphene loaded coating? I know this answer, but I cannot answer. <laughs> so which heat transfer coefficient? It's HC or HR. Who would like to try to answer? Just pick up one choice. <laughs> Hello, my dear student. Which heat transfer coefficient, it's the HCHR, was affected the most by graphene loaded coating? Hello. Someone want to try? Yeah, Shafiq, Shafiq Barik. Oke, okay, Shafiq Barik, you may try to answer this question. So which one? H. Shafiq Barik. H. C. C. Yes. Hmm, it's C, Prof. What do you think? No, sorry. Yeah, sorry. Okay, so the other the other student, we still have two option instead of HT or HR. <laughs> H 
H T or H R. We still have two option to answer correctly. Please, quick, quick, raise your hand. Yeah, Rayhan. Okay, Rayhan. What is H -R. your choice? H R. Hmm, what do you think, Prof? Good. It's correct. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Rayhan. Thank you. So we have five. One, two, three, four. So we have four student answer correctly. Thank you. And now we can continue to move to the question and answer. Maybe for the student who have a question to Professor Yang, you also may ask him a question. Ada yang mau tanya enggak? Kalau ada yang mau tanya, boleh raise hand. Boleh bahasa Indonesia. I will help you to translate it. Okay. While waiting for others to prepare the question, actually I actually I am a little bit curious with your research, Prof. So would you please share to us? Would you please share to us the okay. application? the application of your research goal. So for the coating of graphene nanoparticle, so what kind of application that you would like to get from your research goal? Oh, I'm very, uh, actually, I'm not very uh, involved in this uh, graphene nanoparticle research. Uh, I'm working on other uh, 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 materials. Uh, this uh, graphene dose is uh, coating. He is going to graduate this year. So uh, after he graduate, I I may lose the uh, research power to conduct this experiment. Mm -hmm. I see. But uh, I have uh, other research interests in uh, in the field of uh, uh, polymers. Uh, here's my uh, re current research topic. Uh, the first one is uh, silicon uh, contact lenses, uh, and the next is uh, nerve guide counters, uh, which is uh, for uh, uh, what? Uh, yeah, and Abit uh, is uh, working on this one, and the third one is uh, vascular uh, stent, and this is uh, for uh, co cooperative with the other uh, uh, from uh, uh, from doctors uh, National uh, Taiwan University Hospital. This is a, a, a interesting topic uh, uh, involved the, uh, the study of uh, cardiovascular stent and and other things you want to ask. Oh, I see. So, vascular stand, as I remember, Dr. Iman also one of the researchers in this topic. Iman? Yeah. For the vascular stand. Iman, uh, yeah, he works on the previous uh, uh, topic in this field, in nerve guide uh, conduit. Uh, no, uh, he he is now involved in also in this uh, in this in this topic. Okay, so what kind of materials that you use for this work? Uh, polydactic acid, PLA. PLA. So so only polymeric materials, or you create a nanocomposite? Uh, no, no, no. This is a. Uh, uh, Compared between uh, PLA and also the other uh, PBAT, you worked before uh, in your master's thesis. Okay, you so work, uh, also worked on PBAT. Oh, I see. Yeah. So blend those polymer. Uh huh. They are blended. Yeah. You know, actually, I would like to continue the PBAT nanocomposite research. <laughs> and also, Radit said to me that uh, we still have a lot of raw materials there. For the nanoclays. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, so it's, uh, I think it's uh, good to continue this research. Okay, so is there any other question from the student regarding this lecture talk? Ada yang mau tanya enggak? Oh, yeah. Great hands. Ya, Rehan. Oke, okay. you may ask. Saya mau bertanya dalam bahasa yeah. Indonesia nggak apa-apa, Bu, ya? Ya, yeah, oke. Okay. I will try to translate it. Ya, yeah. you may. Uh, ini kan pro, uh, mas, tentang material grafin ini masih baru gitu, Bu. Kira-kira yeah. kapan produk yang memakai grafin ini mudah ditemui di pasaran gitu, Bu? Oke. Okay. Oke, okay. so you say... Kapan gitu ya? Yeah. Oke, okay, you. Terima kasih Bu. Ya yeah, sama-sama. Uh, Rayhan told us that the graphene research is uh, actually new research, and then he is curious when this graphene will be a mass production. Uh, now we can get the uh, graphene in a large quantity. Uh, one of my students. Okay, the student. He worked on the coding. Actually, he owns a uh, company selling uh, graphene. So we can get a large quantity of graphene uh, without any charge. Oh, okay. his company so it's yeah, already he's putting, producing uh, graphene. And <laughs> by exfoliation. By exfoliation method. Yeah, electrochemical uh, for exfoliation. And, and also it is also commercially the graphene that he produced also yeah okay. yeah you can buy the graphene nanoparticles or nano fake uh, uh, on the market yeah yeah okay sudah terjawab belum Rehan sudah Bu terima oh. kasih thank yeah. you Is there any other question? Maybe one more question. No one. Pak Hanif maybe, because Pak Hanif also work a lot in the graphene research. No. Okay. Okay, again, I would like to say thank you, Professor Yang, for your very, very comprehensive talk, for your very comprehensive lecture. And uh, I hope that we can continue to the next session of the guest lecture with another topic. And then, thank you for being here, Professor Yang. I hope you are all, always in the safe and health condition. And also, I would like to say thank you to Raditya Mobiliu, who helped Professor to Hello. set up this meeting. <laughs> thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. So, I can move to the host again, Mbak Aurel. Okay, thank you very much for Professor Ming Chen Yang for the lecture. And thank you to Mrs. Amalia Roshida as the moderator. Now, before I read out today's winner, allow me to give the certificate to Professor Ming Chen Yang. Okay, I will share screen the certificate.
Okay, this is the certificate for Professor Ming Chen Yang. Thank you very much. Yeah, let's give applause. Clap, clap, clap. Yes. Okay. Uh, next, I will read out the winner uh, on this day. First is Ibriziani Anisa. Second is Rafi Priyadiantama. And then next, uh, Rahadian Ahmad Prayoga. And the last one is Rehan 2020. Okay, for the winners, please contact the committee. Okay, uh, I will stop share screen. Okay, with this, all the guest lecture agenda have been completed. Thank you very much for the attendance who have followed this guest lecture. And we hope this guest lecture is beneficial for you and give more insight about improvement of the heat dissipating performance of powder coating with graphene nanoparticle. Thank you very much. And we'll look forward to seeing you again at the next guest lecture. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Mbak Aurel. Thank you very much, Professor Ming Shen Yang. Thank you very much, Prof. Do you have a course after this, Prof? No, no, no. no I have no class today. Oh, do you, you have no class today? Do you still remember with Kiku Fukushima? Uh, I remember she went to New York now. Yes. But she's still in New York? Yes. She's still in New York and uh, maybe two or three days ago, I was very surprised because she emailed to me and say, hi, Amalia, it's a long time ago. I never heard you. And he, she said that now she has a baby. 